Hello, this is Sabrina Moreland from the Walter State Library, and today I have a video that will explain how to find appropriate sources for your research papers on the internet. And so this should be just a review for many of you, but anytime we're looking on the internet for information, we want to make sure we're using a criteria to evaluate these sources. And so authority is really important. Who wrote the information, what gives um, this group or this person or this organization um, the credibility or the credentials, background information, education, and so forth. We want to make sure it's accurate. So is it correct and truthful? You can double check that um, information to other sources that you've run across, to your own background knowledge, um, and also looking to see if there are a list of references or works cited or bibliography to show you where that information came from is really helpful. You want to think about the audience. So who is this information intended for and are you part of that audience? Uh, you want to make sure it's appropriate to college level research and sometimes, depending on the audience, there could be um, biases for you to think about. So you want to be aware of those. And then currency is very important in that you want to make sure you're using information that is up to date, depending on what you're researching. And so technology, medicine, politics, all of that changes very quickly. So you want to make sure you limit um, the date range on many of your searches. And then coverage, is it appropriate to your information need? Is it extensive? Um, does it only mention your topic in passing? You want to really look at the context of that information and make sure it meets what your assignment is. There are different tiers of reliability. Top tier is those peer-reviewed uh, a peer-reviewed journal article or an academic article. Um, that's conducted by an expert or a scholar in a field, generally a research study. And so you can find this information on the internet. Typically you find them in the library databases. However, um, using something like Google Scholar would help you with that information. Um, there are cases where they might ask you to pay to view the information. And so that's when you'd want to use our databases. But that's the most um, credible, sort of high quality scholarly, scholarly information. Mid-tier doesn't mean it's bad. Uh, it's just not peer reviewed. So it hasn't gone through that process. But periodicals, um, companies put information out there. There are just uh, trade publications, government sites, even libraries produce information. So it's just written by a different group of people um, that could be journalists or, you know, company PR folks. So just you want to think about who's responsible and why they are producing that information. And then lastly, bottom tier are personal websites, blogs, social media, very opinionated, biased pieces a lot of the time uh, that may not have any um, credibility to them. So you typically don't want to use this type of information for your research. You always want to look at the domain because using .gov, .org, .edu is better than .com or .net. So really quickly, you can just look at that top level domain and be able to make a decision on credibility in that sense as well. So you'll still want to think about um, currency and coverage, but the .com or whatever it is you're looking at, that domain matters. And that's just a quick way to filter out what may not be as good um, of information for your papers. So Google, we're all familiar with Google. We can use that to get background information or general knowledge. We can use it to help us make a research plan or generate keywords. Um, really good place to find statistics. A lot of times we think those databases, those articles there will have them, but all kinds of great ways to find statistics, government sites and so forth have those. And then also those popular sources like magazines um, can be found on the internet as well for free uh, access. And so Google has an advanced search that you may or may not have used before. We still can use Boolean operators, so and, or, and not, to develop our search strings. We can use a feature in there to limit our domain to a certain type. Um, there's also licensing available. Now this kind of relates to copyright. But if something is under Creative Commons, so that CC on the screen, then it might be under a certain license for you to just freely use that information as long as you give credit. It might let you remix or remake that information. And so there's a way to check that and make sure that we are getting just that type of um, you know, information that an author says, yes, you can use this in this way. And there's just a couple more tools that you can use in Google as well. So let's go to Google. 
and we'll type in food safety first. And so this is just without doing anything else. So I could put and uh, salmonella or and regulations, um, you know, food safety or food poisoning, however you want to do that. But to get to this, the advanced search, we go to settings and we click on advanced search. And so then you can employ these boxes to add terms. You want to have maybe a certain phrase in there, any of these words. So these could be your related terms that you've come up with. Uh, none of these words are sort of like not. So you would use like the minus sign or you could plug that in there. You're not looking for a certain concept. You can change the date range or certain numerals involved. But here you can change language and so forth. But this is our site or domain. So if I put in dot gov and hit search, all I see now are dot gov sites. So I can probably trust that domain more so than other domains. So it's a really quick way to limit the type of site you're looking for. I go back to advanced search and perhaps I look for just dot orgs, but also I want to go to usage rights and this is where I can say I would like Creative Commons license, right? So if I click on that and hit advanced search, then I have um, those, this is a .org that's linked to a .gov, um, but I have a limited amount of sources to look at. Now there's Wikipedia, that's where that criteria really comes in handy. You shouldn't use Wikipedia, to, you know, based on the type of site it is. But it is free to use information based on those, um, the license, Creative Commons license. So that's just a quick overview of how to get to the advanced search and use that in Google. Google Scholar may or may not have used that before, but this is again where you find those scholarly academic articles. And um, if you know you can't access it fully from that site on Google Scholar, then you could potentially find it in the library uh, databases. So you could search for the authors or the title there and maybe get access to it or even go through interlibrary loan. And you can look at different citations or reference chasing. This means that you look for where else has this article been used and if it's been used many times then it's probably a very good source um, so you can employ that and the other sort of related articles could be potential sources for your paper as well so let's go to Google Scholar and let's put in food safety or food poisoning and you get lots of results you can narrow by currency right you can put in your own date range and so forth by date or relevancy but you see you get book chapters you get PDFs and sites and articles all kinds of good stuff so the National Institute of Health here really good um, and so then again you can click into one of these and see if you have full access depending on the type of site we don't want to use ResearchGate but here is cited by so you want to make sure it's relevant, of course. You could always add, um, you know, certain locations or certain populations. But this has been cited, this book uh, excerpt or chapter has been cited 119 times. And so if I click on this, then I have all this other information that I could click into or look for in the databases if I'm interested. Um, we can also look at related articles. And so that would be another source of um, information for me for potential inf uh, sources for my paper. So that's just a quick way of using Google Scholar to get more information. Other places to look, of course, Yahoo and Bing. Um, I'm personally not as familiar with those, but Yahoo does have an advanced search um, page. I had to click on like how to, you know, search for it, Yahoo's advanced search to get there. You used to be able to just go there by clicking on the more um, link and it would take you but um, Bing also has some suggestions on how to do advanced searches so you can look for that library guides I do want to uh, touch on that a little bit more if you search for something on the internet and you type in like food safety and library guide 
then this means you're going to get something that a librarian has put together for his or her institution. So that means the librarian has done the work and has gathered all these really good sources in one place for you to use. Um, so that's something to be aware of. Librarians love sharing what they've created. And then there's also just very broad digital libraries that have open access to all kinds of different types of sources like the Digital Public Library of America and the Internet Archive. So very quickly, Yahoo, their advanced web search page looks like Google's in a way. Um, different boxes to limit and like little fields here to change. You could click on a certain domain um, and a few more other elements that you could alter as well. So that's, they do have one if you are more comfortable with using Yahoo. Bing really just has these suggestions on how to employ um, advanced search options and these different symbols that you could look at. Here is an example of a library guide on food safety. So this is a research guide from a, another university, but all these links that I don't have to really even think about, right? U.S. resources that this librarian has put together. Here's a, a video um, from the World Health Organization. Here are some international sources. Um, find how to find articles and so forth. So library guides, you want to search for those. Again, that means a librarian has put this information together for um, people to view. And then here is the Digital Public Library of America, which kind of looks like a database in a way. If I put in food safety, then I get different types of information. So I might just be looking for a text. So just like in those databases in a way, you can limit and filter. So if I click on text, then I only have print information to think about. I could choose a certain area. Maybe I do uh, safety measures. And I could also limit by date, right? Because we want to think about currency, like I said. So we could quickly put that in. And then we're just given a few results. So maybe the date was um, too much. So you want to always think about, you know, going back to previous searches and that sort of thing. But you can look at this information and, and access a full text document um, in that way as well. That would also be really good. So I hope this is helpful to you, providing you with a few more options for searching on the internet, uh, ways of evaluating those sources so that you are getting um, the best information for your research need. I appreciate you listening, and if you need any more help with your research, please feel free to contact me, my email address, uh, my, my eLearn uh, name is there if I'm embedded in your class and my office number. Have a great day.